Hello, big data and BigQuery developers. My name is Michael Manicheri from the Google Developer Relations team for the Google Cloud Platform. And I'm here with my good friend, Felipe Hoffa. And today, we're going to talk to you about um, a feature that people have been asking us for a lot. And every time I'm on the show, I take pride in the fact that the BigQuery engineering team listens to developer feedback and, and you know, presents to you the features that you've been asking for. So today, we're going to talk about one that people have been asking for for a long time. And I think a lot of developers are going to be interested. So Felipe, can you tell us a little bit about this feature that uh, people have been asking us for? Hi, Michael. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, yes, as Michael says, we are always adding new functions to BigQuery. We are always adding new features. The engineering team is amazing. And um, today we are doing this show because there is a new function that we really wanted to take the time to introduce, to show how it works, and to show the big potential it has. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what this function is? Yeah, so can you tell me a little bit about it? I heard the name is correlation. Exactly. It's Pearson cool. correlation. Mm -hmm. So what is correlation, first of all, and what is Pearson's correlation? Yes. Correlation is, in this case, Pearson correlation mm -hmm. is a mathematical function mm -hmm. uh, where you, if you have uh, a series of two numbers, two uh -huh. series of numbers, you can see how well related are them linearly between each other. Uh -huh. um, can you give me an example of like wh what what could those numbers be? Uh, for example, uh, let's say as the temperature as you get higher temperatures, mm -hmm. do you sell more or less ice cream? Mm -hmm. I'm guessing more. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So th there you have a linear correlation that we should be able to express as a number. I see. So if you collect data about um, so what the temperature is over mm -hmm. the course of the day or over the course of the week, and how many ice cream cones you sell, you can actually run these numbers through this formula mm -hmm. and get a, a number that expresses how well correlated the numbers are. That's how I understand it. Does that sound right? Exactly. Uh, for example, if every time that the mm -hmm. temperature increases, mm -hmm. you sell more ice cream, and mm -hmm. if the temperature goes down, you sell less ice creams, mm -hmm. uh, that's a positive correlation. Right. And the closest to one, mm -hmm. when you cal calculate it, it's the more aligned it one, each of these variables are right. to each other. Right. And you can also test for things you don't know about. So maybe there's maybe uh, people are selling, you know, uh, mm -hmm. notebook computers and you know, your Chromebooks, and you you don't know if it's related to the temperature or not. Maybe it is. Who knows? And so you can take the same approach to other things that probably you don't know if they're correlated or not. Exactly. Let me show you with a visual example. Excellent. Uh, this is my iPython notebook. I'm mm -hmm. starting to use it. I love it. Uh, if any of you viewers have tips on how to do this better, please tell me because. I'm just starting with it. Definitely. So let's start importing some of the magic uh, functions. Mm -hmm. Pandas is a great library. Mm -hmm. NumPy is a great library. And uh, let's play a little with this. For example, what was the uh, temperature yesterday? Let's say you sell ice cream. Uh -huh. And yesterday. Yesterday it was it was m pretty moderate. I'd say it was a uh, 21. I'm going to use Celsius. Celsius. Yes. Okay, <laughs> that's for our international viewers. In fact, I don't speak Fahrenheit, so even better for me. Okay, great. Uh, yesterday was 21. And how many ice creams did you sell yesterday? Uh, well, I sold seven ice cream. Seven ice cream. Seven or 70? Oh, seven okay, yeah, yeah. No, it was very popular. So 70. 70. Let's say 70. <laughs> And do you remember last week? Oh, yeah, last week was really hot. It was super hot, 30 degrees. 30 degrees, yes, that's super hot in Celsius. Uh, how many ice creams? Oh, I sold way more. I sold 180 ice cream cones. <laughs> 180 ice cream cones. <laughs> uh, what about two weeks ago? Oh, that too, it was a cold snap two yeah. weeks ago. Well, it was colder. Let's say it was around 16 degrees. 16 degrees. Mm -hmm. And how many ice creams did you sell? The ice cream trade wasn't going well that day. 35. 35, that's yeah. a very little. OK, now we have three days. We have uh, three temperatures. We mm -hmm. have three ice cream salt, uh, three days of selling. Mm -hmm. We can plot this. OK. Let's see how well they look together. Whoa. <laughs> so yeah, so what, what do we see here? Is this the, the line we, we kind of expected? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the green line and the blue line. Mm -hmm. The blue line is the temperature that goes up and down, yep. and the ice cream salt also go up, up and, and down. down. So, but in the, in the graph, it doesn't look like there's a strong connection between these two. Exactly. But you, you mm -hmm. can see that there is some correlation. Uh -huh. What we can do to better look at the relationship between these two variables mm -hmm. is instead of looking them on time, we can plot one next to each other on right. a scatter plot. Let's look at that. Ah, yeah. Great. Looks like, there, looks like there is a strong kind of a line that goes through all of these. Exactly. When the temperature was 16, mm -hmm. we sold less than 40. When the temperature was uh, 21, we sold 
70 mm -hmm. and when the temperature was 30 we saw 180. Mm -hmm. You can see that there is a linear relationship between right. both. And we can get a number for it with asking for correlation. So this is running the what you call the Pearson's R. You're going to do a Pearson's R correlation between these numbers, these series of numbers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I want to know how linearly correlated these numbers are. Uh, let's run it. 0.99. This is almost one. Mm -hmm. So this is a. Does this mean a high correlation? This means a very high correlation. Mm -hmm. The hotter it is, the the more ice creams you sell. Right. So the, um, just to get kind of a ballpark. So mm -hmm. as I re recall, Pearson's R um, goes from I think it's it's negative one to one is the scale. Yes, sir. So a zero would be like no correlation at all. Exactly. Um, something closer to one means a very strong positive correlation, mm -hmm. and if it's negative, that means it's a negative correlation, meaning the number one, num one number goes up, the other one tends to go down. Does that sound right? That sounds right. Let's run another example. Let's mm -hmm. see negative correlation. Sure. For example, you also sell coats. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that day? That was the first day. It was twenty-one degrees. Sure. Uh, how many coats did you sell? Oh well, I sold. You know, I sold twenty-five. Twenty-five. Well, a lot of people buy coats. Yeah, twenty-five coats is pretty mm -hmm. good. And uh, the day that was so hot, the 30 degrees? Yeah, I sold very few. I sold 10. <laughs> you sold 10? <laughs> Somehow I sold 10 that day. Yes. And how many did you sell that day that it was colder, 16 degrees? 47. 47. OK, let's plot that. All of these numbers are true, everyone. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I have a coat ice cream store in Mountain hmm? View. <laughs> and a ice cream and coat store. Oh, ice cream and coats. Yeah, you, you never lose. <laughs> Here we can see the line is going down. Mm -hmm. The hotter it gets, the less uh, coats you sell. And we can see what the correlation number is. For the numbers you just gave me, the correlation is minus 0.96. All right, so a strong negative correlation. Exactly. It's going um, down. Yeah. Going down, almost minus 1. All right, so I know what to sell. Now I know what to sell when it's hot or cold at Michael's Ice Cream and Coat Shop in Mountain View, California. Um, so this is great, but so th this seems like this this problem is easy to solve on your on your iPython notebook. So w when would this be hard to do with your iPython notebook? Why would we need something like BigQuery in this yeah. example? If you have three data points, if you mm -hmm. are looking at two th series, mm -hmm. it's very easy to do it on your own computer. Mm -hmm. Or it all depends on how much data can fit in your computer. Mm -hmm. But sometimes data can't fit in your computer. Yes, you have terabytes of data. Yes. you have gigabytes of data. You want to analyze them or not? all at once. And that's when BigQuery comes in. So just for people that don't know, Google BigQuery is an API to mm -hmm. a, an analytical database that lets you analyze your own, run queries over your own data um, in seconds. I mean, you, you can actually run uh, queries over gigabytes and gigabytes of data and get the result back in seconds. Um, it's a great developer's tool because it's all accessed mm -hmm. through an API. Um, so you can actually write code to access it. We also have a UI that you can use to run queries. And uh, so this is fantastic. So we've taken this correlation Mm -hmm. function. And we've actually applied it to very large data sets. So very not just stuff you can, you can keep on your, your notebook, but things that are really massive, the gigabytes and terabytes of data. Exactly. So what we might do now for everyone is mm -hmm. let's pick a data set, yes. a massive one, yes. and let's look what kind of correlations we can find in them. Excellent. Do you have any favorite data set? Yes. So I have a data set that I love. It's a, one that a lot of people use mm -hmm. for things like correlation. It's the, the Rita on-time on airline database, which is kind of put together by the Department of Transportation. I love this data set. You can actually go Google it um, and, and find it. It's all, it's all available for you to use. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I've taken three years, about three years of data, and, and put it into BigQuery from this database. So basically, it gives you, um, if we go to my laptop, I'll show you uh, the, U, the web UI. Mm -hmm. um, we, it basically gives you the date, the, an airline code, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the departure airport and arrival airport, and also the delays, how, how the flight was delayed. Was it delayed five minutes? And if it took off early, it'll have a negative number for the delay. Um, and same thing with the, uh, the arrival. So was it delayed on arrival? You know, what, was it five minutes late? Was it five minutes early? This is a great data set, not only because it's huge. Yeah. I, right now, I don't even have the entire data set in there. I have about 70 million records. 70 million records. 70 million That's records. 70 million flights recorded yes. on the query. Yes, over all of the time period. This is just United States data, too. Mm -hmm. There's even more out there. And uh, it's all in BigQuery. And it's about, you know, it's about eight, 8 gigabytes of data in there right now, um, so pretty considerable. It's it's definitely a lot for so if you're using R, something like R, something that would be way too slow for R and just mm -hmm. might not even fit into memory. And you'd have to do right. all kinds of tricks with, with something similar. Same with, with IPython. It might be very difficult to do timely results and mm -hmm. not be able to do some of the things we want That's to do. That's amazing. So yes, so let's, uh, let's take a look. So I'm going to learn how to use core. I, I've okay. hardly used it. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to do a couple queries to see how this works. And okay. I'm really excited. Let's start things very simple. OK. 
show me the table, please. OK, so let's just take a look at the, at the details of this table. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, uh, if, you, if you look at my laptop, this is sort of what the data looks like. Um, here's the date. It's just a string. Um, we have a string. We have airport code. Um, so this is like Houston and Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and the, we have some information about the departures. So we have uh, the arrival, uh, you know, the arrival actual time, and the delay. So this is what we're actually looking at: is how many minutes delayed. So this particular flight, randomly that I'm looking at, was delayed three minutes, and it was uh, the arrival mm -hmm. time was 11 minutes late. Cool. So for every flight, we know when it happened, yes, how late it was, yes. where did it depart from, mm -hmm. where it was going to, right. the airport, mm -hmm. the state, yes, uh, and, uh, and we have some other information as well, like the latitude and longitude. But we're going to be looking yeah. at the uh, well, the time. And 80 million lives. <laughs> of rows with that data. Yes, exactly. Awesome. 80 million or Can 70 million. Can you show million. me which one has been the worst day? Yes. So let's let's take a look at that. So mm -hmm. the worst. So we want to do the worst day. So that would be we want to select the date, and we want to select. Do you want to look at average departure delay? Yes. Let, let's look at the worst average. Okay. So I'm going to use the BigQuery function average, mm -hmm. and I'm going to look at uh, departure delay, which is just a number. So I'm looking for average departure delay from this data set. And what do I want to do? I want to group by date, because I want to know mm -hmm. um, which, which date has the worst average. And I'm actually going gonna, gonna to label this as AVG group by date. So this should give me the, uh, the days with, on average, the worst departure delays Excellent. for the entire data set for all of these years. So let's run this. This is now running over 70 gigabytes of data. Um, and it took three seconds to <laughs> return. That's amazing. Three seconds to return. Um, so let's take a look at this. Uh, so yeah. l l just looking at these. There is something missing there. Yes. What do we want to do? We want to sort it. Ah, right. So this is unsorted. So we want to sort by the, the departure delay time. Exactly. OK. Which, right now, we're looking at each date, what was the average. But we, are, we got them in a random order. OK. So I'm going to do something here with my query. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, um, date is the first parameter mm -hmm. that we're looking at in the query, and average departure delay is second. So I'm going to say group by one, yes. meaning date, and order by two. And I also want to do order by two descending. Excellent. So okay. that way we get the worst day. When was the delay? What day were the delays the greatest? Yes. Let's OK, so at. let's look at this. We're going to run this. It's hopefully going to take about the same time. In two seconds, we've processed all this data. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the worst days were um, you know, December 23rd, 2004, <laughs> yeah. December 21st, 2008. A lot of times that look like around Christmas time. Exactly. <laughs> so what is data telling us now? Well, if you are going to fly, yes. avoid Christmas. Now, now this, is, this is common sense. A lot of people know that it's, it's bad. And we don't actually know if this is, mm -hmm. this is the reason. Is it really because it's Christmas time? We, we can infer things, and we can use this data to point. No, it's pretty obvious that people yeah. travel a lot. But it's amazing that the worst days ever in history yes. are around Christmas, mm -hmm. around New Year is the fourth one. Uh -huh. What about the second? So this is an interesting one. So these are all kind of holiday season times. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. But the ninth worst day was was around Valentine's Day in 2007. And that, that's a really interesting. I, I would never have guessed that. No, is it because people are going on Valentine's Day trips, and maybe there's like a romantic getaway that year? So actually, I, I was looking at this data a little bit earlier. And uh, it turns out that if you, if you uh, and I think a lot of people might know this, they, uh, there was a Valentine's Day storm in 2007. Uh, the North American blizzard. And that was the reason why all of those flights were delayed. Yeah, I remember that day. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. It was really bad, right? So it, it's interesting to know that that day was bad, mm -hmm. but we have, we have had even worse days. Yes, we've had it's worse <laughs> average departure delay times. And there was Christmas. <laughs> OK, exactly. so this is fantastic. So now I've, I've actually learned something I wouldn't have learned because of this, this query. Exactly. So what are we going to do now? Can you show me the worst days? By state? Yes. So the worst days by state I can do by, um, by grouping by state, right? So Excellent. I want to add one more thing here, which is let's take a quick look at our schema again. So I think it's departure state. Departure state, yes. So departure state. And uh, I want to say select the date and departure state. I want to group by the one departure and state. And I want to order by column that. three. So I've just actually just changed the group by. So let's run this, mm -hmm. see how that works. I love doing these live queries. I can learn <laughs> something every time I do this. So this is running now. It should, mm -hmm. should be, take a little bit more time because we're, we're grouping by. Um, so that took nine seconds. Um, so now we have, uh, now these are the worst, the ordered by down. We have the, I don't actually know what TT stands for. Wyoming is, yeah. is, is the second one. So it looks like uh, 
some of these dates, Wyoming was actually the worst for exactly. whatever reason. In fact, w w one important thing when looking at data uh -huh. and why we are doing this live mm -hmm. is to highlight what problems we have when doing this kind of average. Mm -hmm. When grouping data, when doing, an when doing an average, you really want to average a lot of numbers. Yes. If, you are a if we have only one data point, it's not very representative. Mm -hmm. So what we can add to this query is a count yes. of how many numbers ah. we are averaging. OK, so let me add one more parameter, mm -hmm. and that Excellent. would be the count. And so I'm adding count. I'm going to call it C and alias it. So mm -hmm. let me just move this down so people can see. So now we have the, the, de the date, the departure state, the average uh, departure delay, and the count. So I'm going to just run this again. I think everything should, should look the same, except we'll have now a count of how many times mm -hmm. these flights were going out. Great. So now I have one. So that seems like a pretty small sample. What should I do to? Exactly. If only one data point for one day for one state, it's not very interesting. Let's filter out. Uh, small uh, states, uh -huh. like if there was only one flight that day and it was very delayed. Uh -huh. We can't really say much about this. Sure. So let's have uh, data points where let's have an average when we have a, a real number of flights. Let's have at least 10 flights okay. from so that state. And this is where I want to use the having clause. So I can say, give me results having a count greater than something. Awesome. So um, if I'm not mistaken, I would do something like this. Where I, I say, count, let's say the count greater than 50. Greater than 50. We, we can choose whatever. But, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to run this again, um, filtering out some of these states with uh, less flights. Exactly. Let, let's get real average, yes. not just kind of like, loose data points. Right. So this is great. So I love this iterative process with BigQuery because, mm -hmm. we're, again, we're going over 70 million records. Ah, so this is an interesting one. Now we have flights from you know, large states, large mm -hmm. airports, Oregon, Maryland, Ohio, Georgia. Count is 87, 126, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so the worst day ever in all the recorded history we have mm -hmm. uh, was two days before Christmas in Oregon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the average delay that day was three hours. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yes. That was a very bad day. Exactly. And then you, know, you can see another kind of holiday seasons you know, around New Year's, same kind of thing. Like huge travel delays probably due to a lot of people. We don't know, but this gives you a pointer to see why. <laughs> and this is awesome. Mm -hmm. but. We want to go further. Yes. You've always been able to do this with BigQuery. Now we want to get uh, to compare uh, states with other states. Right. For example, the day that New York is bad, are there other airports that are bad at the same time? Uh huh. Yeah, this is fantastic. So, mm -hmm. what, so we want to take this data and actually do a correlation on some similar data set, right? Or, or the same data set. Yes. So how do we do that? First, mm -hmm. let's, star let's start with a data series. OK. Let's get the series of all the, the average delays per mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. for one airport. OK, so we can take, or one state, maybe? Or for, for one, one state. state, yes. Let's do a state so we can have more data points, too. So I'm going to do the same query, I believe, but mm -hmm. I'm going to add, add where departure state equals something. Yeah, we will order by day this time, uh -huh. because we want every day. OK, so I'm going to order by one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to um, add a where clause, where departure state equals, if I can type it. Mm -hmm. equals pick a state. New York. New York. Sounds like a good state. So here we have, I'm adding departure state equal New York. And I'm going to run this again, the same query, mm -hmm. just by filtering out all the other states. So let's see how this works. Um, two seconds later, we have, ah, oh, look, it's around New Year's. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> one. Uh, OK, so this isn't ordered, but. Yeah, let's, uh, let's have the order now by date. By date. OK, order by date ascending. Yes. This is great. So I'm just oh. changing the way it's ordered. Yeah, I was actually ordered the, the wrong way. So here it is. So this is the very first date in our database. That's the delay. This is great. Awesome. This looks like a data series. Mm -hmm. And we want to run the correlation between this data series and another ah. airport. OK, so how correlated, for example, is New York to California right. or that's to a, New Jersey? Yes, that's a great idea. OK, so how do we? what should we do next? That, this is where we, do our, we can do a self-join. We run uh -huh. the same query two times. And add them as columns. OK, so can I, I can actually just take the same query. Yes. I'm going to do a join. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this or wrap this around in some parentheses and call it, let's call it A. And I'm going to uh, join mm -hmm. with a, the same query. Um, and we can actually, we'll, we'll be able to edit this in a second. So I'm going to do a quick join. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to join it on. And I'll have to do another select, but I'll show you that in a second. So I'm going to join on. What are we going to join on? The date. The date. The okay. date has to be the same. So I want to say a date equals b date. Exactly. And I have to call this b, or whatever you want. It's an alias. And now, now that I have this, I can say 
select, uh, I want to say, uh, select the A departure state. Yep. Uh, B departure state. And I will spell it correctly. <laughs> so I want to do that. And then I want to select A average and B average. Yes, that's cool. And what else do I need to look at? Do I need to look at the count as well? Uh, let's look at the count. It's always interesting to know that we have enough data to make a correlation. All right. So I'll just I'll just do like that. Um, so that so this actually should work. But now I'm looking. I'm oh, comparing yes. New York yeah. to New York. Yes. Let's not do the count now. Ah, okay. Because we, we are not really aggregating. Uh, let's compare New York to California. Okay. So I'll change one of these to California. Mm -hmm. So this will give us what the average yeah. departure delays. Yeah. And to make this query even more efficient, mm -hmm. we don't really need to order them. Oh, right. Because yeah. it's just actually yeah. just joining. Exactly. So I'll take these out. Let's get rid of that step to make it even faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see how this works. This is uh, a much larger query than before. Oh, and I ah uh, a join where? Mm -hmm. So uh, let me just take a quick look. Uh, making sure that I have everything correct. Select, you're missing a from. Ah, thank you very much. Yes. From the outer select. Yep. I missed a clause. There we go. Awesome. So that should work. Thank you for pair programming with me. <laughs> OK, here we go. So here is our query. This is fantastic. So now we have, so these are actually, I'm um, joining join on a date. We have the departure state, departure state, New York to California and the average departure delays every single day. Exactly. So whenever in New York we had an average of 4.2, uh -huh. uh, California had an average of 2.8. Right. Interesting. Yes. So now we can do, this is interesting, because mm -hmm. now we have two days. Is this working to a correlation between these two states? Exactly. Is there a correlation? Is there no correlation? Let's look at that. All right. So the way I want to do correlation is mm -hmm. uh, the core function. And mm -hmm. is this where I, I, would, I would run the core function on these two variables? Yes, sir. The averages from both. So now I'm, I'm actually just taking, slightly changing this query. I'm adding the core function, wrapping that around these averages. So I should now get a correlation between the yes, two. But mm -hmm. correlation is an ag uh, aggregate query. Ah. Uh -huh. So you need to group by something. Yes. And we were going to group by the departure state. OK, great. So I want to group by uh, 1 and 2. Awesome. And when I say 1 and 2, again, I'm referring to these first two columns we're selecting. So now I'm going to run this again. That's our new shorthand. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> wow. So across all history, yes. if we look at every day in New York and California of how delayed they were, yes. the correlation is? Three, four. So it's, a, it's kind of a weak correlation. It's a weak correlation. Yes. We can say there is correlation, but it's not very strong. Yes, not if very strong. flights are delayed in New York, they might be delayed at California, mm -hmm. too. Now, it just makes some sense. It kind of. It just makes some sense because they're far apart. You know, the plane can make up time. Who knows? There might be no, no connection. The weather systems are different, mm -hmm. et cetera. I don't know the answer, but it, there's a sig not very significant mm -hmm. connection between these two. What about New York and New Jersey? All right. So New, New York and New Jersey, very connected. Some of the airlines, the planes are similar places. The weather systems are similar. Running the exact same query again with New York and New Jersey. So, ah. Now look at this. The correlation is, is actually quite strong, a 0.83. We went from 0.3 to 0.8. Yes. This means if there are delays in New York, it's very probably that there are delays in New Jersey too. Right. So this is fantastic. So that, that also makes some sense. Like now we're looking at the entire data set. We're getting a really good understanding of the, those correlations. That is right. Now can we find things? That seems pretty obvious. Can we do one more kind of query where we can find things that are not so obvious? Like how do we find out things that we maybe don't know? For example, can you tell me what's the state that is most correlated to New York? Ah, interesting. The most correlated to New York. How would we find that query? Uh, we would remove the selection of states from. Mm -hmm. So per, I don't actually want to select any particular state well, from each of these. You can leave New York at the first one, so because we want to know which state is the most correlated to New York. Yes. So I want to just say I want to take out the where clause from my second second query subquery. And now I can basically run the same thing. Now it's going to pick all the states. Yes. Now we are running a very big amount of combinations. Yes. We are combining the data series from New York from uh -huh. every other data series we have. Right. So this is thousands and thousands of combinations going through. Okay. okay let's try this out. L let's uh, sort them. Let's, let's sort the end result. Okay. So we're going to sort by, should we sort by departure state? Uh, by the correlation. Order by. So we get the top correlation first. Okay. Got it. So I'm going to actually name this. I'm going to name this C, mm -hmm. and I'm going to order by. You can order by three. Too. Oh, by three. Yes, that's our shortcut. And I love and it. a descending. 
And we'll do it descending. Good. So we'll know that the worst ones, or the most correlated first. OK, got it. Great. So I'm ready to run this query. Uh, is this going to be a lot too many data points? Let's see. I think this is going to be great. So it's taking just a few seconds. So now this is doing a huge number of combinations. If five seconds later, ah. <laughs> <laughs> the most correlated state to New York is New York. The correlation is 1. Good. That's a good ground truth of what we've been doing. Okay. Um, it's very good to know that because it means that we are doing this right. This is fantastic. And uh, you can see this is kind of interesting. Of course, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania. So, so states nearby. It looks like weather is a big big part of that, obviously. We can kind of scroll through the results. You can see Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Florida, and Connecticut, You know, things that are still on the eastern seaboard. Um, and then you start to get a less of a correlation as you move out west, of course. Uh, you've got Kentucky, and you've got Ohio, and things like can that. Show me the least correlated state. Yeah, so I can, just, I can just go to last. And guess what? It's Hawaii, and Hawaii. the second one is Alaska. <laughs> and it's almost zero, if you can see. It's, there's actually so, no correlation between departure delays, exactly. at least mathematical correlation. Yeah, whatever is happening in New York, it really doesn't affect what's happening in Hawaii what, mm -hmm. and what's happening in Alaska. And that's something very interesting to know. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. But this is another reason why um, you can f if you find interesting correlations mm -hmm. that you didn't expect. So I, I kind of expect this, right? I kind of expect the weather to be. But what if you found a, a state or an airport or something where you didn't expect it? Like, for example, New York is correlated with, I don't know, um, some mm -hmm. like Colorado. And I wouldn't expect that. So maybe that's pointing to another problem in the system where who knows what the problem could be. And I'm not saying there is a correlation. We don't see that here. But mm -hmm. let's say you had Cor Colorado and New York were correlated. Something else is going on. Maybe computer systems in those two venues are broken. Who knows what it is? But you could use something like this to, de to find significant correlations that point you toward mm -hmm. a problem or something cool that you want to fix or yeah. want to. Or to look at something else. Mm -hmm. Can you look into the future with this? Ah, so can you predict? This can is a good predict? question. I don't know. Can we? What should we do? We can go do the same correlations, but instead of correlating to the same day, uh -huh. we can correlate the previous day. Yes. OK, so how we how do we do that with BigQuery? Do we have we have some time functions we can use? Exactly. We can take, for example, the second subselect mm -hmm. and look whatever happened the day before. OK, so I know, let me see if I can build this query. So we have a, a function called timestamp. And that will turn a string into a timestamp, which is a BigQuery data type that we have native. Um, we, and we have a, a another function called, I think it's called date add. And date add allows you to shift time back and forth with these timestamps. So, uh, so the, date, the data add function um, is one in which I can say, take this date, this timestamp, add, will you want to do one day differently, two days? Um, let's do one day. Okay. Let, let's take the day before. So add one day to it, yes. Right. And so this, and I want to turn this back into a date. Yes. String. Please. So th that's another function we have called date. So I'm actually just running a bunch of functions on the, on the, the string date that we have. I'm turning it into a timestamp. I'm shifting it one day ahead. And then I'm turning it back into a string so we can compare. Wow. So let's see. That's a lot of things going on for yes. 70 million records, which is great. Let's run it. Let's, let's see if find, I. Yeah, let's find the best correlation with New York of bad from the previous day. What's the best predictor of what will happen with New York tomorrow? All right, let me just make sure I did this right. The date, mm -hmm. the timestamp here. And here, I think that's right. Okay, let's try it. Let's wait. Oh, and that's I can't. Quick. Oh, so I am. Uh, I'm grouping by. Oh, you need to add date and comma there. Thank you. You have to yes. Thank you very much. I Excellent. didn't add that. Let's run it again. I forgot my alias. <laughs> So this is running over 70 million records. It's doing this incredible join. It's changing the timestamp. It's doing counts. It's looking at all combinations. Combinations. And it's running a correlation on top of this. So this is a lot of things happening over a really large data set. It only took 15 seconds, which yes. is pretty fantastic. So look at the top result here. Interesting. So what I'm looking at is now this is, <laughs> this is really interesting. So one day ahead, I see some not super strong correlations, but like kind of medium correlations between mm -hmm. states I wouldn't have expected. New York and Tennessee. So, so this, this is telling me that the best predictor of what is going to happen in New York tomorrow. Uh -huh. In terms of departure delays. So yes. this is, if there's a departure delay in New York, there's a moderate correlation between mm. what's happening in Tennessee. We don't know why. Exactly. We have no idea why. But there's some correlation that's much greater than some of the other states. I see Virginia and Missouri. 
Um, and this could be any number of things, right? Like one, one hypothesis could be that the plane is late in New York. Mm -hmm. As it flies to these other airports, then it's late the next day because maybe the plane has screwed up the schedule or whatever. Yeah, or it could be, it could be weather patterns that move from one place to another. Right, weather patterns and things like that. I would never have guessed Tennessee is the top one in this, <laughs> in this example. Yeah, so this that's is fantastic. Um, is there another thing we can do? Can we, can we do things by, um, um, by quarter? Is there some way we can look at different quarters? Exactly. We can improve the predictors. Maybe some predictor is very good during the summer, mm -hmm. but during the winter it makes no sense. Right. So let's look things by quarter. Okay. Now how let's do we do that? Let's see how we the correlation mm -hmm. goes to New York State. The, what's the best predictor? Depending if now it's summer, if uh -huh. now it's spring. Okay. So we need to add a new field. Let's, let's add, add quarter. So quarter is we have a function called quarter, and that yes, operates on timestamps. Is that right? So I need to do the same thing: convert my date to a timestamp, and then use the quarter function. So that's an oh. easy one. So I'll use quarter, quarter, and then timestamp, and then date, and I'll call it Q. I'll call it Q. Okay, and I'll do the same thing on both queries. Yes. And then I have to change a few things because I'm adding a parameter. Do I add it here? So I'm going to say, should I just pick one quarter because they're, they're being joined on quarter? Uh, yes. So I say a q. And you need to join on the quarter too now. OK. So I join that and a q equals b q? Yes. They will be equal, but it's better if we make sure that they're joined. OK, so I'm just going to report one, one quarter mm -hmm. there. So this should, this should run. OK, so let's, let's run w this. Yes, we need to regroup things because ah. we have a new field now. So one, two, and three. Got it. And we order by the fourth one. Excellent. So this is, makes it really handy to change things. OK, so yeah. let's. And mm -hmm. Yes, now you, and the subqueries, you also need to add uh, this new field because they have a new field. One, you group by one, two, three for both. Excellent. I love this uh, the shorthand for this. OK, great. So we're, we're going to run this again. Let's do it, mm -hmm. see how this goes. What are we missing? I believe I don't have a space here. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this would be great. <laughs> Line 2, column 33. Yep. I yes. am missing my parentheses. Thank you. Thank you, BigQuery Web <laughs> So it's running again? Running again. This is a larger query. Now we are segmenting by the quarter. We have with predictors. We know that Tennessee is the best predictor of New York. Uh -huh. But will that predictor work at any time during the year? Ah, interesting. So I see that mm -hmm. the quarter we're ordering. So we're ordering by this. That was the fourth quarter, and that was that's winter. And so like okay. we can actually look at some of these predictors, and we can see like which ones are the quarters. So I'm just going to scroll through. It's winter, winter, winter. All of these kind of correlations happening. The only one that's not the fourth quarter of the year is the first quarter, yeah. also winter. <laughs> well, first quarter, it's uh, spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th well, that's interesting. The first quarter is you know January, February, March. Oh, you're it's, right. It's pretty cold. So I mean, this this makes a lot of sense. And uh, you know, w we don't see a lot of anything in spring or summer mm -hmm. until like maybe the twentieth one, and that's already getting into the week. Exactly. But for example, there the first summer we have. Mm -hmm. If it's summer, and you want to know how late flights will be in New York mm -hmm. uh, the next day, don't look. Uh, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Look at Ohio. Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, like, like you look at some other states for that for when it comes into the third quarter. That that is fantastic. Um, okay, this is great. And I just want to take a quick look at the least correlated, so awesome. which is also in this. And we have some like it, we don't even have data for some of these. Mm -hmm. But of course, you get Hawaii in the first quarter, Hawaii in the second quarter. So if you have a, a departure delay in New York, there's no way that it has any correlation to departure delays in Hawaii in any quarter. It looks like because <laughs> I can just flip through here and see. So this is actually mm -hmm. fantastic. So we're, we need to wrap up pretty soon. So we've, we've gone through this. Um, this, is, this is really amazing, because you can mm -hmm. apply this to any number of things. And this is just a random data set that I like, which is flights. But you can look at retail data. You could look at your log data. You could find anomalies or stuff that you didn't expect using correlation about mm -hmm. two variables that are not connected or connected. Exactly. On yesterday's blog post, mm -hmm. we talked about how to find anomalies in data. Mm -hmm. What is going weird on your rooms, on your Using the data sensing lab, mm -hmm. we started looking at, hey, things are behaving pretty normal, or mm -hmm. things are behaving weird. And with correlation, mm -hmm. you can get a quick alert of things going uh, not as expected. Sure. So correlation doesn't actually 
tell you exactly what's going on, but at least it points you toward what could be happening. Like a, a statistically significant something is happening with numerical data, and what is it? And you can use this technique to find out those things. Today we're looking at how to predict mm -hmm. what, uh, mm -hmm. how your flight time will be, uh, and maybe we could use it for more things like mm -hmm. How about segmenting your customers? Mm -hmm, exactly. You have millions of customers. Each one behaves in a, in a different way. Uh, can we segment them? Um, yeah, that's fantastic. You can find segments that are correlations that you probably didn't know about. Um, and it's up to you to explore. And I love what you can do with BigQuery is you can explore these data sets very quickly. Exactly. Sadly, we won't have time for that today. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, look f forward for a future blog post where we look at that kind of correlations. And uh, look forward for a lot of news from the BigQuery team. That sounds fantastic. And just before we wrap up, where can people read your blog post, Felipe? Oh, yes. Remember, we have the Cloud Platform blog. Mm -hmm. That's where we posted yesterday. Uh, remember to follow us on Google+. Plus. We are on the, what's the name of our? Uh, the Google Cloud Platform page. Google, exactly. Mm -hmm. Follow us there. Uh, find us. We are on mm -hmm. Google+, Plus too. Michael Manuteri and Felipe Hoffa. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you have technical questions, leave all of them in Stack Overflow. Mm -hmm. We, the team, everyone here really loves Stack Overflow, mm -hmm. and that's where we like answering everything. And that looks, looks great. And I want, what I want to know is uh, if people are using Core, pl please let us know. Like, po you know, post to our Google Plus page and let, let us know um, what you're doing. And uh, we, we'd love to see what you're doing with this, because I think it's very powerful, and it's something that you don't see in the other technologies. Yeah, running correlations, uh, multivariate analysis. Mm -hmm. That's some statisticians mm -hmm. were happy to see yesterday when we posted this. This is going in a really massive uh, space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you will get to play with this. Hopefully you will get to share your stories with us. And I expect to see you soon. All right. Thank you very much. I'm Michael Manicherry. Thank you, Michael. I'm Felipe Hoffa. Yeah, this that's is fantastic. fantastic.